you want to know who Jesus is, this man Jesus that became flesh and lived on this earth in order to save us, start with the first verse of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That phrase, in the beginning, that's important because it also opens up the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him nothing was made that has been made. Who's that talking about? In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Verse 14 tells you who it's talking about. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So in the beginning, the first phrase of the Bible, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John 1-1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You can remember Genesis 1-1 and John 1-1 and learn a lot about Jesus. But it's, a, it's used a third time. Another time it's used is in Hebrews chapter 1. Now, this one's not... Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, that would be really easy to remember. Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, John 1.1, 1, 1, Hebrews 1.1. 1, 1. But it's Hebrews 1.10, so just add a zero. Because in Hebrews 1 and verse 10, the Bible says, and this is the Father talking to the Son, and this is what a lot of people don't want you to know is in the Bible. God the Father speaking to God the Son, and here's what he says. You, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Put all that together, it means that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And John 1, 1 says that Jesus was there in the beginning. And Hebrews 1, 10, the Father even says that Jesus is the one who actually did the creating of the heavens and the earth. No wonder in verse 8 of Hebrews 1, the Father says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The Father calls him God because he is God. He's God the Son along with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one who created the world. And uh, don't let anybody tell you differently, because the New Testament teaches that very, very plainly in several places. And in the beginning, that phrase, remember that. Genesis 1, 1, John 1, 1, Hebrews 1, 10. Now, when they were arguing about his identity in John chapter 8, he told them, before Abraham was, I am. They knew what that meant. They wanted to kill him. That was the name that was given by God at the at the burning uh, bush in Exodus chapter 3 when Moses said, Who are you? Who am I to say has, has sent me on this mission? He said, You tell him, I am has sent you. So Jesus didn't say, I was. Jesus didn't say, I will be. He said, I am. He's present tense, which means, and they knew what he meant, whether you want to admit it or not. They knew he was claiming equality with God, claiming to be God, and claiming to be eternal. And... Um, of course, he comes back from the dead to prove that all the things that he said and claimed were were true. Thomas, you remember Doubting Thomas? That's where he gets his name because he wasn't there when the other apostles met with Jesus. And, and they told him that Jesus is alive. And, and he said, unless I see the scars in his hands and in his side, I will not believe. And so Jesus shows up again and says, Thomas, here are the scars. Here they are. And Thomas realizes it's really him, and he says, my Lord and my God. Now, when people said that to angels and tried to worship them, angels stopped them. But Jesus accepted worship. That would be blasphemous if he wasn't God. Because you remember when uh, Satan tempted him in the wilderness, he said, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. The only one that is worthy of worship, the only one that is to be worshipped is God. Thomas worshipped Jesus, and Jesus accepted it. Uh, he forgave sins. You remember um, when they brought the lame man to him in Mark chapter 2? And he told the lame man, your sins are forgiven. And then he performed a miracle and gave him the ability to walk to prove that he had the power on earth to forgive sins. No one can forgive sins but God. In fact, the religious leaders on that occasion that's what they said. They said, this is, this is uh, blasphemy, what he's saying. He's claiming the ability to forgive sins. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus didn't argue with their point. He just proved that he is God. Only God can forgive sins. So on and on and on we could go, but the Bible plainly teaches that Jesus claimed to be God and is God, and he is the eternal I am. And so, you know, a lot of people have trouble understanding the Trinity. The Trinity trips a lot of people up. And let me tell you how you can just simplify that in your own mind. I, I don't understand exactly why it's so confusing because, um, you know, I just accept the fact that the Bible teaches things that I will never fully understand. But if the Trinity trips you up, remember this, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit 
are both interested in what you think about Jesus. Okay, it's all about Jesus. They both put the spotlight on Jesus, and how we respond to Jesus is what it's all about with both the Father and the Holy Spirit. So whether you understand them or not, if you want to please them, just focus on Christ. Okay, think about Christ, live for Christ, love Christ, because he is the one that is to have the supremacy in all things, according to Colossians 1 and verse 18.